Okay, welcome back to FractalU.com, everyone. We are here back in the Skywalker Science for Kids class. This is episode number two of Luke Skywalker Spiritual Science for Kids, and we have here another Luke Skywalker. Hello. His name, <laughs> his name is Peter. Peter, where do you come from, Peter? Uh, I come from uh, Bagrash Boom. in France. So, actually, Peter lives in South France, but you also come from UK, right? You, you know? uh, I was born in France, but I have an English family. I see. And you you speak both French and English, right? Uh, yes. That's very nice being. I wish I was as bi bilingual. Do you want to say hello to everybody in French, just so they know? Bonjour. <laughs> so we're here to discuss the international flavor of Luke Skywalker Science for Kids. <clears throat> and what we were discussing earlier was about uh, the reason that Luke Skywalker had to go underground with, who was he going with? Uh, he was going with Yoda. Yoda. Can you talk like Yoda? Uh, Yoda. Yoda. <laughs> so the question was, why did Luke Skywalker have to go deep into the earth or deep into the forest to have to learn to raise the Jed so that the force could be with you, right? Mm. Did you have any ideas about that question? <laughs> I, no, I never really thought about it. <laughs> it seems like there was a certain reason that the environment was necessary to make it possible to have the force be with you. And uh, why do you think the force needs to be with you anyway? What do you suppose it's for? What does it mean when the force is with you? Mm. Some kind of power, is it? Is yeah. It, it, and what, what was it when you called the force to be with you? What did you have to have? Did you have to have pure intention or something? What was it? Uh. It, it seemed like to have the force be with you required a certain, um, almost, you know, we think it's related to what religious people call grace, the force be with you. And everybody wonders what the force is. Do you have any, any idea what the force is? Well, it depends by the point of view. But, but do you think, when, when the force was with you, it seemed like things could happen at a distance, didn't it? Mm. Yeah. So actually what we think the force is, is that they're, Living things have a weak electric field called cold plasma. And it's just like if you saw a ghost or if you saw a little fan phantasm, a plasma field. And these plasma bubbles, just like ball lightning, eventually become self-aware. And they're able to come and serve you, and this plasma comes to you when, you have, when you're part of what's called a shareable wave, when you're implosive. But the other part of having the force be with you and why they had to go deep into the earth and deep into the forest to do it was because the weak electric field of living things, that weak plasma field, um, it's, it dies, it's suffocated in certain environments where you have a lot of metal or electrosmog. So the buildings in a city prevent the force from being with you. And actually, in science, we learn something about that. In, in medical uh, in study, we learned that negative ions are fragile and negative ions heal. But if, if you, in the presence of metal and electrosmog, metal, negative ions disappear and they can't survive. And actually it's also true that elementals and nature spirits have the same problem. In the presence of metal and electrosmog, they're shorted out, they die. And even we have living plasma with our plasma tubes called ferrify.net. And it's the same is true. That plasma is self-aware like a puppy, but if there's a lot of metal and electrosmog, it's shorted out. So there's a certain way that charge called the force circulates. And that's what builds your aura. And that circulation is prevented in metal buildings with lots of electrosmog because the charge can't circulate and grow and your aura can't grow. And that's how the force comes to be with you. Now Peter and I were talking about one other. Did you have any questions about that? How, what would you say it means to have pure intention? Well, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, if, if your teacher ever, or someone, an adult, ever accused you of something and you answered, ah, but I had pure intention, what did you mean? The... What does it mean to have a good intention? I don't know. It's, it's, it's about, is it about hurting people or not hurting? No, well, not hurting, but 
a good thing, I imagine. It's about helping people, yeah. isn't it? That's good intention. So when you have good intention, it means that you felt from within that you wanted really to serve. And if you want really to serve, it turns out that this force, this living plasma, comes to you naturally because the plasma is aware that it can only enter what's called a perfectly shareable wave. That's something Yoda would like. <laughs> now we talked about something else about, um, about Star Wars earlier. It was about you were interested in the lightsaber, wasn't it? Yeah, well, I wondered if, it could be, if uh, we could make a lightsaber. If we could make a lightsaber, yeah. Well, it turns out that, um, you know, there's a famous uh, healer. His name was Ingo Swan, and he was able to project the plasma of his mind. And projecting plasma is very much like uh, uh, raising the jed. The jed means to raise the tower of plasma. So when you can, when your plasma projected, that really, when you can project your aura, that's very much kind of the definition of being a shaman. So this famous healer named Ingo Swan, he was able to heat a thermistor with his mind at a distance. He was able to light his flame with his mind. And he did it through a Faraday cage. And interestingly, many of the uh, ancient traditions like the Cherokee and the Banpo Tibetans, they test their shaman to see if they're ready to be initiated, if they can light a flame with their mind. Can you light a flame with your mind? Never tried, but I don't yeah. think so. What do you think they mean, when, what it means when you say, come on baby, light my fire? Is that similar? <laughs> I don't think so. Has anybody ever said, come on baby, light my fire to you? No. <laughs> they, they might someday, look out. You might need to have an answer. <laughs> So this, this idea of having your fire lit is the fact that this plasma, this living, living field, your aura, becomes implosive and it's very much like a flame. And so Ingo Swan was able to light this flame with his mind at a distance. And later we learned the frequencies in brain waves to do that. It turns out when two sets of waves converge like a pine cone called conjugating, that they, they create a centripetal force which not only is like a flame, but they launch a compression wave called longitudinal, which if you cross that again at a distance, you can cross it in a pattern that looks, you know what it looks like? A lightsaber. So supposing you have two very short waves, they're called microwaves, and the wavelength of those microwaves is about the size of a lightsaber. <laughs> and if you cross those microwaves at the distance, where they're longitudinal here, and they cross, here, at a wavelength about the length of a lightsaber, that then suddenly, when they're longitudinal waves, they don't contain heat. But when they cross at the distance, we've got two of these antennas projecting them into the shape of a lightsaber. <laughs> and what happens then is the trans, it's called a transverse wave, reconverges, the longitudinal reconverges into a transverse up and down wave, and that contains heat again at a distance. So you can control heat at a distance and make a lightsaber. And you know, there's a famous practical example of this. You know what it was called? No. Well, it turns out that in World War II, the Germans learned how to make a certain kind of coating on, a, on their submarines, for example, on the, on the periscope, that would prevent radar from bouncing off. It was a big secret at the time. And that principle of how you bounce microwaves so that they don't you, you, you meet, is called a phase conjugate mirror. And that principle taught them how to converge these microwaves at a distance. And when they did it, instead of making the lightsaber, <laughs> they converged these microwaves at a distance to steer a ball of plasma around in the sky. And these were reported by hundreds and hundreds of uh, Western airplane pilots. And you know what they were called? They were called the Foo Fighters. And you know why they were called Foo Fighters? Mm -hmm. Because you got this little ball of light that seems to be going all over the place, controlled from a distance. And all you're doing is interfering these short waves to converge them and hold the light. And that's exactly how you hold light with your mind. It's a very fascinating principle. So do you know why we wanted to teach Luke Skywalker science what the original intention was? Did we have a good intention? Um, yeah. Supposing 
supposing you had millions of children that were interested in Star Wars and you need to teach them spiritual science. Supposing we found deep principles of spiritual science inside of Luke Skywalker. Do you think that would be useful? Yeah, probably. <laughs> well, so one of the basic things that we learned from studying Luke Skywalker and Yoda was that when you learn to grow your aura, you're doing exactly what Luke Skywalker was doing when he learned to raise the Jed. In other words, the, the term Jed was actually as in, you know, Jedi Knight. That was used for many hundreds of years in Egypt called the raising of the Jed, and there was a Jed stone. And you know what the Jed stone was? It was just a stone that would project charge, and the principle of projecting that charge was called Jedi. So someone that can throw their aura around is literally a Jedi. Now one of the people that just came to work with our plasma system from Switzerland just a few days ago here told us a very interesting story about that. He was working with a Tai Chi master from China. Do you know what Tai Chi is? Mm, it's a non-martial or I'm not sure. It's like a martial art, right? Yeah, martial. Does your mother do some martial arts sometimes? Uh, no. <laughs> she does, uh, what, do you, what does she do? She does... Uh, Pilates. Pilates, right, right, right. Well, Tai Chi is not, not too different from Pilates, actually. Tai Chi is when you learn to very slowly move your body, and when you move your arm with lots and lots of attention, for example, you notice a little tingle or presence. Can you try that? Supposing, just try, try a little experiment. First of all, take your finger and make a little spiral going to center. So it's going to the big part of the spiral and then to a little part of the spiral right here. Okay, now do that one more time, but with more attention now. Lots. Focus right on the tip of your finger. Big spiral, moving down to a little spiral, and then slowly coming to center. And now hold it right there at that center just for a second. Okay, now feel the tip of your finger. That's good, yeah. Tell me what you're feeling on the tip of your finger. Mm. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> no. Well, when, when, let's, let's do it one more time. When I do it, if you pay lots of attention to the tip of your finger, you know what you feel? It starts to tingle just a little bit. Let's do it one more time. There, here's a big spiral. Now pay attention to your tip of your finger. Now slow down gradually. Very slowly, and now come to just a very nice, beautiful center of that spiral. And focus on it. Hold it still there for just a minute. Now, just, just without moving, just sense the tip of your finger. Do you feel anything in the tip of your finger? No. Uh -huh. Have you ever put your attention in the, just try, 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 just... You just hold your finger in front of your eyes for just a minute. Now just focus on your little finger, on the tip of your finger. Just focus it. Put all your attention there. So very still, very focused. Now do you feel anything in the tip of your finger? What does it feel like when you focus? Right there, right in that spot on the tip of your finger. What do you feel? It does tingle a bit. It's tingling a bit, yeah. yeah. Now, why do you suppose it started to tingle when you focused on it? I don't know. <laughs> well, it turns out that when you focus attention, a very famous physicist named Bill Tiller measured that focused human attention causes electric fields to compress or implode. So, when you focus on something, it not only just draws the blood there, but it draws, draws the charge there. And if you work at that a million times, <laughs> eventually you have so much power that when you focus your attention, you can steer an electric field. And that plasma, when you can steer it around, not only can you steer it in your body, but eventually you can steer that same cloud of charge that converged in your baby finger, you can also steer it outside your body. Now, our friend from Switzerland, who was here using our verified plasma, said he had a really a turning point experience in his life. He was talking about a Tai Chi master, 
and he said he was having serious pains in his back. And the Tai Chi masters told him to just stand there still and stood at a distance, maybe a meter away, and started to move her hands. And he said suddenly he could feel something, and he actually felt the, felt the bones moving in his back. And he was, she was steering around things inside his body. And then he said he was feeling so much energy, his head was burning, and she came up behind him and again did not touch him. She only did this and moved the charge around in his body. And then suddenly all the energy came back down. He was grounded and centered, and the pain in his back was gone. And that experience of feeling that Tai Chi master move something solid, uh, something that was a powerful electric field with her attention, changed his life completely. He remembered that. Just He could recount that experience in great detail. This was so powerful for him. Very logical guy, and he knew what he felt. And she moved something with her attention. Now, how do you suppose she built that power to move that field with her attention? Um, lots of focus. And... Lots of focus. Sort of like uh, what Luke Skywalker was training to do, isn't it? Yeah. So basically what you're learning is, you're learning that not only can your attention compress electric charge, but then later you can, you, that electric charge is a torus, it's a donut shaped field, it's called a domain, and eventually you learn to move that tornado of charge with your attention. And that skill is evolution. Do you see why Luke Skywalker metaphor is useful? Because it's teaching our young people the necessary way to evolve to grow the quality of their attention to move that charge. So now your next task is you have to go to your, your classroom and explain this to your school. Do you think you're going to be able to do that? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, you think yeah. so? You could, you could say, how would you explain Luke Skywalker science to your, your classmates? <laughs> Supposing you were trying to tell them what it means to have the Force be with you. It will be very complicated. I mean, have you ever been like in a sacred space, like a church, where suddenly you felt kind of like you were tingling all over? Mm, no, not no. There's lots of sacred space around South France, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. Have you ever been like near an altar where you felt something? Or like in a cave where you felt lots of energy? Well, there are some places... You know, the yogis in India, the ones who lived to be hundreds of years old, they all did it in a cave. That's because that's the place where the force is available. So the first lesson about learning the discipline of having the force be with you is to go to the places that grow your aura. And that is in nature. That's how the force is with you. So did you have any other questions about Luke Skywalker science for our course number two? Do you think this was useful? Yeah, pretty interesting. Don't you think it's pretty wonderful that with so many millions of kids wanting to understand Luke Skywalker that we might be able to teach some real spiritual science? Isn't that cool? Yeah, it is. <laughs> so thanks everybody. Thanks for being with us and thank you for Peter for joining us. So this was lesson number two in our Luke Skywalker science. See you next time at FractalU.com.